night, we expose the shocking reality of life for the dogs in some of Britain's puppy farms. We saw about 30 dogs in filthy pens. Some dogs were chained on two foot of chain, they couldn't move. And the terrible cost of the puppy smuggling trade. There are big losses during transportation. The dogs die whilst being transported because of stress. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. There are more pet dogs in Britain than ever before and the puppy business is now a multi-million pound industry. But has our demand for designer dogs led to inhumane treatment and unhealthy animals? Jonathan Maitland reveals the truth behind the bargain dog trade. There's a lot of money to be made in selling man his best friend. Owning a dog has never been more popular, with almost a quarter of homes having a pet pooch to welcome them home. There's nine million of them in the UK, and since 2012, that number has shot up at a rate of half a million a year. Considering that some pedigrees cost up to £2,000, it's fair to say that puppy business is big business. Now, not so long ago, if you wanted one of these, you'd simply find a local breeder and then wait, possibly months, for a suitable puppy to become available. Cool. But now, of course, you just go online because it's flooded with websites offering breeds of all shapes and sizes ready for you to give them a home. Which sounds great if you want a dog, but you've got to ask, where are all these puppies coming from? Many of these dogs are from commercial breeders, people who sell more than four litters a year. Commercial breeding requires a licence from the local authority. The majority are based in Wales, producing more than 20,000 puppies every year. Whilst many of them keep the dogs in humane conditions, the worst of them are known as puppy farms. These are places that care more about making money than the welfare of the dogs, often operating without a licence and it's thought that one in six puppies for sale in the UK were born in one. This is the reality of life on one of Britain's puppy farms. These dogs were found inside a barn in Wales, left to live in their own filth. This exclusive footage was filmed earlier this month. Several dogs were kept on short chains, others cowered in corners. Many had nothing to drink. There's no water. No water in here again. A dog displays the typical distressed behaviour of a farmed animal. These puppies were separated from their mother. The dogs appeared to have very little to eat, except, shockingly, a dead calf, which looked as though it had been left for the dogs to feed on. This place isn't licensed, so it's impossible to know how many puppies have been sold from here, but they've been advertised for sale at farmers' auctions. So we saw dogs, uh, about 30 dogs, in filthy pens. The smell and the, the taste of the ammonia was terrible. I was in tears. I, I, I was in tears. I wanted to just pick those dogs up and take them home. Ronnie runs an animal charity and risks her own safety to get footage like this. She's had threats in the past, so she's asked us to conceal her identity. Despite years of campaigning, she was still shocked by what she saw. That is, that's just so cruel, isn't it? I mean, didn't the people there running it have any, any awareness of how appalling that is? It would seem not. And he's already known to the RSPCA because we reported him two years ago for keeping dogs in inhumane conditions. And so we thought we'd go back and check and see how much it had improved. It's not improved, it's worse. The RSPCA say they're investigating and are working to ensure that the welfare of the dogs is being met. We contacted the farm's owner, David Owen, to see if he had any explanation for these conditions. He didn't respond, so we went to the farm ourselves. Excuse me. Are you David Humphrey Owen? Are you David Humphrey Owen? We're here from the Tonight programme from ITV. We'd like to talk to you about the condition of your dogs. 
tradition of keeping your dogs in. We'd like to talk to you about the tradition of keeping your dogs in. Clearly, he didn't want to stick around and talk to us. Unfortunately, poor conditions aren't only limited to the unlicensed. These pictures are from a licensed dog breeding centre, which has only recently stopped operating. 70 dogs kept in calf sheds with no sign of bedding or clean water, both basic requirements of the Animal Welfare Act. It's doubtful that any puppy buyer would feel comfortable knowing their dog had started life here. Licensed puppy farms can be just as bad as the unlicensed. It doesn't follow just because they have a licence that they're good breeders. So you've got no confidence in the licensing procedure at all, really? None at all. Um, the legislation is there in the form of licensing conditions, and those conditions state dogs must have food, water, comfortable bedding, exercise. Well, I could take you into any puppy farm I know today and show you that just doesn't happen. There's also huge variation in how often local authorities check up on licensed breeders. The majority inspect once a year. Some only visit when the license is first granted and others admit they never carry out an inspection. Paula Boyden, chief vet at the Dogs Trust, says the guidelines are quite simply out of date and cash-strapped councils don't have the manpower to enforce them properly. The actual legislation is very, very old um, and therefore it, it is quite vague. Um, the other challenge is, as we know, that the local authorities um, are being cut back more and more and therefore their resources to be able to inspect are perhaps limited. Oh, good girl. Good girl. So it's enough being done to ensure that dogs are bred humanely. Nigel Gibbons is the UK's chief veterinary officer. Local authorities have to apply their resources in the best possible way. They do it on a risk basis. So they should target their inspections to where the problems are. But, but that's a massive loophole, isn't it? Because if they're not inspecting at all during the year, then the problems could just be proliferating massively. They, local authorities uh, are in the best place to know what's happening in their areas. Um, it's to them that intelligence about things that are going wrong should go and they should respond to that. I agree with you that regulations we have in force need to be applied consistently. The thing is, there aren't enough home-bred puppies to meet our demand. And that's why, since the start of 2012, when our quarantine rules were relaxed, meaning pets could travel freely on a passport, the number of dogs coming here from Eastern Europe has shot up by 433%. Even the government admits that whilst the scheme is only meant for pets travelling with their owners, it's being exploited. We've come to Poland, one of the countries showing a dramatic increase in dogs travelling to Britain. We're here with Julie Sanders from the charity Four Paws. She's on her way to Poland's biggest open market. Although it's illegal to sell dogs at such venues, when we arrive, dogs are everywhere. In cages, boots of cars, even stuffed up jackets. Far too young to be sold. There are dogs to suit every taste, from cute lap dogs like Chihuahuas and Maltese to the larger Huskies and German Alsatians. It's thought that many dogs sold here end up in the UK. So how easy is it to strike a deal? One of the team, posing as the English boyfriend of our translator, starts talking to some breeders. I mean, well, I want to buy at least ten the first time, but then probably more the next time. He says they want to buy in bulk and asks if they can transport them to Britain. To get to England, it must be profitable. If I'm sending a driver, he must take at least 10 to 20 dogs. There are big losses during transportation. The dogs die whilst being transported because of stress. The breeder suggests that we find our own vet to pre-stamp empty British vaccination cards. We'd then send them to her along with pet passports and she'd fill in the details herself so future owners wouldn't ever know their dogs had come from Poland. We say we want young puppies as they're easier to sell. Dogs are banned from entering Britain from Poland until they're 15 weeks old. 
but her partner assures us that they've transported illegally across European borders before. We managed to bring younger puppies to Germany. They had two obligatory vaccinations, not the one against babies. If it all goes as planned, we're told to expect our first batch of puppies within a week. Cheap and shockingly easy to organise. It's an international network. If you look at it, you have the actual breeders, you have the sellers, you have the transporters. I mean, you even have vets. There's a huge demand for cheap pedigree puppies. Uh, the profit margins are high and the risks are very low. The charity warns that conditions at Eastern European puppy farms can be even worse than those in the UK. For every cute puppy that is brought over from Eastern Europe and advertised on the internet is a whole story of suffering behind it. And it's not only the puppies are suffering, but also the breeding dogs, their parents, they're bred from like breeding machines and then discarded when they're no longer able to be bred from. We didn't buy any dogs, but we did contact the breeders to get their reaction to our footage. They replied, saying that during our conversation in the market, they informed us of the laws for exporting dogs from Poland. They repeated them again in their response, but they didn't address the fact that when we pressed them, they suggested ways to get round the law. So, would the smuggled puppies have made it across UK borders? Here at Heathrow Airport's Animal Reception Centre, they run a tight ship. Every microchip is scanned, every pet passport scrutinised. Before the quarantine rules were relaxed, they were one of the only entry points into the UK, so the animal welfare team say they've seen it all before. The advantage of us is that we can tell where you know, uh, passports are forged or blood samples are forged because we see so many. I think it's harder for people at the ports because they probably see a lot less and they're probably less experienced with you know, seeing these type of uh, problems. Customs aren't looking for puppies, they're looking for drugs and obviously, you know, human smuggling. They don't really care about, you know, dogs and cats. Sharon Edwards investigates suspected illegal animal imports into London and since the quarantine rules were relaxed, her team's investigations have increased by 350%. Earlier this morning, she sees two French bulldogs from a home in London, brought in by ship from Lithuania and advertised for sale online. Their passports claimed they were 16 weeks old. To me, I'm not a vet and it would be quite obvious that I was looking at a puppy here that is tiny and not yet four and a half months old as its passport says it is. These puppies are probably barely old enough to have left their mother and then they have been transported across Europe. And there are welfare considerations as well as, as the disease considerations. And the puppies and the public need to be protected from both. We're just going to weigh these puppies because it helps estimate their age. Now they've been checked, it's thought the puppies are just eight weeks old. There are a lot of puppies that have been bred irresponsibly and imported illegally, and this is criminality. These French bulldogs have already had a difficult start to their lives. Now the puppies have two months in quarantine ahead of them. And it raises serious concerns over whether the checks on vehicles entering the UK are stringent enough. A lot of our highest checks are focused on countries outside Europe. They're very systematically checked. Europe doesn't present the same degree of risk and the rules are different, so we're not carrying out systematic checks at ports. It doesn't matter if a farmed puppy was homegrown or smuggled from abroad. Vets say that kind of start in life can have a negative effect on the dog's health. Common health problems range from fleas and ticks to the deadly parvo virus and an increased likelihood of developing a longer term genetically linked condition. In fact, a recent survey found that when dogs were bought from online adverts, one in six died within six months. When people bought directly from the breeder, less than 1% died. The problem is that unscrupulous dog dealers won't tell you where the puppy has come from. I suspect a lot of people don't realise that they are buying a puppy from a puppy farm. Um, certainly what some, some uh, breeders will do is actually use a, a middleman, use a, a dealer to actually sell the puppies on, um, so that it may not be obvious where the puppies actually come from in the first place. The puppy trade is a lucrative business and Lisa Walsh was one dodgy dealer who enjoyed its spoils. In just three years she made more than £170,000 selling farmed puppies and forging kennel club pedigrees. 
Donna Aves was one of her customers. She bought an eight-week-old Labrador puppy as a family pet and named him Digger. But the excitement was short-lived. Digger developed the extremely contagious Parvo virus and died within a week. To see something so small and vulnerable become so ill and hoping all the time that, you know, things are going to turn that corner and start, you know, getting better and of course they didn't. There were so many customers with similar stories that Norfolk Trading Standards launched an investigation. Their officers raided the barn where she stored her dogs and rescued them from its squalor. It was later revealed that Walsh was claiming her puppies were vaccinated against deadly diseases, when in fact they were not. She's pleaded guilty to fraud and is awaiting sentencing. I hope she does time for what, the, the pain that she has caused all of us. I hope she gets a permanent ban on breeding dogs, certainly, but owning them too. Why should she be allowed to ever own an animal again? She's not a nice person and she doesn't care for animals. Of course, not all commercial breeders and their dealers mistreat their dogs, nor are they puppy farmers. But that still doesn't mean that they comply with the law. We were tipped off about a puppy dealer near Swindon operating under the name People's Pets and advertising a range of breeds online. His customers were not happy. Amongst their many complaints, they said they'd been given the impression he was a breeder, yet when they got the paperwork home, it said otherwise. This way, Ruby. Sue Smith bought Ruby, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, from him last May. Crucially, she didn't notice the one telltale sign of dogs that had been bought in. There were lots of puppies around, but no mums. I didn't notice that there were no adult dogs around. I never thought to ask about the mumps. Um, even after I left him, I was convinced he was a breeder. Ruby became ill after a few days. Sue took her to the vet and discovered a severe flea infestation, which had left her anemic. Ruby needed a blood transfusion. Her treatment cost almost a thousand pounds. The vet said the infestation was so bad, it had to have been there a lot longer than the week she'd owned her. So Sue decided to call the dealer. I said, I took her to the vet yesterday. He said, well, what'd you do that for? I said, because she was seriously ill. He said, but I told you, don't take her to the vet, phone me. He said, and you can have your money back and get a new puppy. And I said, what, like a broken toy? You just take it back to the shop and say, this toy's broken, can I have a new one? Good girl, Ruby. Ruby's made a full recovery, but Sue says she's determined to stop others from making the same mistake as her. A dog is just an object that will get him money. I mean, I don't regret buying her. I just regret that I lined his pockets and added to the problem because this chain's got to be broken. It really has. We decided to visit the dealer ourselves. <laughs> Armed with undercover cameras, we made an appointment to buy a dog. Right, those four are cabochons there, yeah. like the design across his muscles. Cavalier, girl, boy. The puppies had been separated into different areas around his property. The conditions looked hygienic and the man himself was friendly, but would he answer our questions openly? Is the mummer over me? Need the mummy? No, uh, on those, my friend owns mum and dad. Okay, what, yeah, what, they, what they like as dogs? They're cavaliers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you talk about cavalier, you don't get bad cavaliers, you just really don't. This dealer has licensed his home as a pet shop. He's allowed to sell a friend's dogs without providing details, but if they're from a licensed commercial breeder, then welfare laws dictate that they should be wearing collars and tags saying where they've come from. None of his puppies were. We choose our dog, a nine week old cavalier, and then he takes us through to his office. So which dogs do you breed yourself? Uh, I breed Westies, I breed Cavaliers, I breed Yorkies. The team leave with their puppy, now named Lucy, along with a sealed envelope containing all of her documents. OK, so let's look at the paperwork. This is the pedigree certificate and it's a photocopy, but it's a doctored one. If you look closely, male there has been changed to female. Now we've shown this to the RSPCA, the Dogs Trust and the Kennel Club and they say it's not from any known organisation. So it's basically meaningless. 
And this is the vaccination certificate. It's from a vet in Carmarthenshire, Wales. Now, this is where the breeder's details should be, but the dealer has put his own sticker on top of them. And if you look carefully under the sticker, uh, those details have been covered up. So what's he trying to hide? We took the vet's card to a forensic document examiner and she was able to uncover where Lucy was born, a licensed breeding establishment in Wales. While this place may be breeding dogs humanely, by selling Lucy without her information tag, either people's pets or the breeder is hiding where she came from and thus breaking the law. We contacted the man who runs People's Pets and he said any allegations about him being connected with puppy farming are false, wholly refuted and contested. Puppy well-being is of critical importance to him and he never tells a consumer that he breeds the puppies. He only uses commercial breeders that are licensed and of high ethical standing and he considers them all to be friends. Regarding Sue's dog Ruby, he said two vets hadn't noticed the fleas at first, so they must have come from other pets in the household. Customers are told to call him if the puppy falls sick to avoid expensive vet bills they can't afford. He says the paperwork is legitimate, the pedigree certificates are photocopied because he struggles with IT, and he changes male to female afterwards for ease. And he removes the breeder's information on vet's cards because he's the acting sales agent and including their details would be confusing and frustrating. He says the dogs don't wear information tags because the collars have serious health and safety ramifications and aren't necessary because he follows local authority requirements and not central charter legislation. We checked with Wiltshire Council who told us that was wrong. The county was not exempt from national law and they'll be looking into our findings. So, some advice for future puppy buyers. Vets recommend only using breeders who screen their dogs for genetic condition. All animal organisations warn against meeting a breeder anywhere other than their home and be vigilant when you're there. Look at the mother, make sure it is the mother, watch the puppy suckle and make sure you see it a few weeks before it's ready to pick up. And look out for people that are selling multiple breeds or have got multiple adverts. Check your vaccine certificate. If the puppy has received any vaccines, I would have expected the puppy to be vaccinated locally, not many miles away. And certainly if any of the papers has names and addresses scored out again, I would be very, very suspicious of that. Finally, some good news about the dog that we bought from the dealer. She's 1.25 kilos. Lucy was given a clean bill of health and it didn't take the dog's trust long to find her a new home with a family who say they fell in love with her the moment they saw her. <laughs>